I was working on a comparative market analysis for a prospective client a few days ago. I was trying to determine a range where I believe she could sell her home in the market we're in right now. I was reminded of a thought I've often had when doing these CMAs. I can literally shape the price the way I wanted to by what I emphasized. I could show stats for Route County. I could show just for Steamboat Springs. I could show condos. I could show condos and townhomes. I could show condos and townhomes in the mountain area. I could show condos and townhomes in the mountain area in the green zone. I could show condos and townhomes in the mountain area in the green zone between 250 and 400,000, or 250 and 500,000, or 300 to 400,000. Month to month comparisons, year to year comparisons. There's so many ways to manipulate the change in the market. My best course of action is to present enough information the client is curious enough to ask more questions. And that's what I try to do here. And so for this episode, we look at different price segments. And I'll be upfront with you, the segment ranges were arbitrary right from the get-go. On the low end, I didn't take in all the way down to zero, primarily because that would include fractional shares and didn't think it would represent the segment appropriately. But I've been consistent with those price ranges and that should make you curious. So without further ado, we are still seeing prices increase in all three segments. On the low side, the median sales price went up 8.6% to $456,000. In the middle, from 750,000 to 2 million, it increased 12% to 1,274,500. And for those homes over 2 million, the median sales price was $2.9 million up roughly 10% from last year. So when you hear about certain real estate markets crashing, you know they're not talking about Steamboat. That's not to say we don't have our challenges. Sales are down across the board. 44% fewer on the low end, 29% in the middle, and 21% up top. And we can attribute that solely to a lack of inventory. In the low end and the middle of the market, active listings for September fell 14% and 21% respectively. Only in the luxury market did we see more listings last month than we did last year by 13%. Those places the media said are crashing are seeing their inventory spike. Meanwhile, we're struggling to get half as many listings come on the market. Both the low and high end saw new listings of 49 and 50% of what they were in September of 2021. And the middle wasn't far behind with only 40% as many new listings as the year before. And gone are the days when listing agents are putting a deadline for offer submissions. Listings are staying on the market longer and a lot longer in some segments. Days on market for the 750,000 to 2 million range quadrupled going from seven days to 28 days. It wasn't as extreme for the other two segments, but there were substantial increases. The low end went from six days to 11, marking an 83% increase. On the high end, days on market climbed 58% higher, lasting 19 days instead of last year's 12. One great indicator of where our market stands is the length of supply. For most month markets, six months is the midpoint between a buyer's and seller's market. If the homes on the market would all sell in less than six months, it's a seller's market. Over six months, and the buyers have the leverage. The luxury market, which the midpoint is usually longer, is at 5.9 months for September. It's up from 4.7 months, but for the luxury market, it's still pretty remarkable. The low end increased its supply by 45%, and the middle remained equal, but you are still looking at 1.6 months and two and a half months of supply, still comfortably in the seller's market range. Along with offer submission deadlines going away, so are multiple offer scenarios. You see that in list, sales to list price ratios, down 2% and 3.1% in the lower and middle segments. More importantly, we have moved off the list to sale parity, meaning more contracts are closing below list price than at, at or above. And generally, buyers are more willing to offer a lower price if they're not competing with other buyers. And sellers are more willing to come off the list price when there's only one buyer. One other indicator to keep an eye on if you're predicting the doomsday scenario of the market crashing is price reductions. 
absolute price reductions for both the middle of the market and the high end were up substantially from last year, 41 from 26 and 19 from eight. On the low end, there were fewer absolute price reductions compared to last year, but it was equal in terms of price reductions per active listing, what I call relative price reductions. I don't think an increase in price reductions alone really tells you the whole story. You have to look with context to the other indicators. Finally, we look at pending listings. All three segments saw in listings under contract a decrease approaching or hovering around 50%. So we can expect our sales for October to all be lower as well. And that wraps it up for price. Next up on the docket is type segments. We'll check out the differences between single family homes and condos and townhomes. From there, we'll move on to reviewing South, North, and West Route for September. And if this has made you curious and want to discuss further, text me at 970-846-0797 or email me at johnjames at jamessteamsteamboat.com or you could always leave me a message in the comments section. Until next time, take care.